For the 18th consecutive year, Denny Hamlin will not win a championship. When Denny Hamlin walks out of Phoenix next Sunday, he'll be watching somebody else celebrate their championship up on stage as he walks out of the racetrack like he's Matt Ryan leaving the Super Bowl for the 18th consecutive year because, once again, he did not qualify for the championship four after running a really good race at Martinsville, but it just wasn't enough. Denny Hamlin has three wins this year, 14 top fives, 18 top tens. He has an average finish of 12.5, and he will not be racing for the championship at Phoenix because of what happened on Sunday when he couldn't close the deal, and he let Ryan Blaney end up winning that race, and he could not get up there to contend with him. And Chris Gabehart, his crew chief afterwards, said, listen, there were two fast cars today, the 12 and the 11, and the 12 ended up winning, which is 100% true. But at the end of the day, Denny Hamlin's championship hopes came to an end last weekend at Homestead when he downshifted and at the same time had a catastrophic power steering failure which sent him off into the wall. Something I don't know if has even been replicated by anybody else out there, but it happened to Denny Hamlin at the worst possible time, I guess. So for Hamlin, he now leaves this season once again without that coveted championship trophy. He's going to watch one of three drivers either win their first championship or he's going to watch Kyle Larson become a two-time champion next Sunday at Phoenix. Meanwhile, he now has gone championship winless for 18 consecutive years years. This isn't like a Dale Earnhardt hasn't won the Daytona 500 in 20 years, 20 years of trying, 20 years of frustration. Denny Hamlin has lived this championship battle for 18 years, start to finish, all 36 races, 18 years in a row, which is way more brutal than only losing one race a year the same way Earnhardt did it. Granted, winning the Daytona 500 back and then maybe meant a little bit more than it does now. For Dale, once he got out of Daytona and went on to Richmond, Atlanta, Rockingham, whatever happened to be the second day of the year, he basically cleared his mind. He didn't think about the Daytona 500 until he got back to it. Denny Hamlin, though, thinks about this championship from when the clash happens at the beginning of the year until he's finally eliminated from the playoffs. And that's got to be absolutely excruciating because every single year, everybody asks him, is this going to be the year? And every year he's like, this is going to be the year. This is the year I finally get it done. And now he's so resigned to the fact that this is never happening that he's going out there on his podcast and being like, I'm content if I never win a championship. And let's be honest, he's not actually that content. Nobody's going to be content unless they have that title. Granted, winning a title now in this elimination playoff format is exponentially harder than trying to put together a just really consistent season. And it's a bit of a crapshoot and a really bad way to decide a champion. So, you know, that is is, there is a little bit that goes into that. For the last decade, he's basically had to play roulette and just hope that his number got called, and it just hasn't. So that's unfortunate for him that he kind of grew up in this era. NASCAR has morphed into this entertainment era that it is now. But for Denny Hamlin, this is a guy that talked a lot of trash this entire year. He beat everyone's favorite driver at Bristol, right? He started up a podcast where he criticized every driver on the grid, except for himself because Denny's never wrong. He got into a scuffle with Kyle Larson and put him into the wall at Pocono and then blamed Larson for Denny pushing up and putting Larson into the wall. He said Kyle should have just backed out, which is a completely insane thing to even say. On that same podcast, he got in trouble for having that podcast, and then he's like, oh, you know, i got to tone it down just a little bit, and then he gets kind of butthurt about things, and this picture of him after the race at Martinsville this week looks a lot like a guy's face that's like, man, I talked a lot of trash, and now the internet's going to give me an absolute beating for what I've said all year, and honestly... It is what it is, right? Denny Hamlin's a choke artist. And when it comes down to it, they're just not that clutch. And if he would have made it to Phoenix, I still don't think he ends up winning the championship. Because every year, just like that article that The Athletic put together where they interviewed anonymously the remaining crew chiefs in the round of eight, and they said, what's the weakness of the 11 car? And basically, unanimously, all of them said self-inflicted penalties, self-inflicted mistakes. They always shoot themselves in the foot. And that's exactly what happened once again. And granted, whether that mechanical failure at Homestead was something Denny could have controlled or not, that is still on the team, right? The car failed, he didn't get to the finish line, and they didn't get the points that they so desperately needed. And instead, they go into Martinsville in a must-win position. Denny Hamlin on his podcast this week said that he was going to be in absolute kill mode. And, you know, I would argue that he was good. He was good all day. And he started fourth, finished third, drove up in the front majority of the day. At one point over the radio, he said that he would do anything to make it into Phoenix. Anything. And honestly, he didn't do everything because he didn't make it into Phoenix. Instead, Ryan Blaney, 
wins the race, finally gets his first win at Martinsville, locks himself into Phoenix. Now he has a shot to race for a championship at a race that he should have won last year and instead basically played the really good teammate card and allowed his teammate Joey Logano to go on to win the race and win the championship. For Denny Hamlin now, he has to watch his teammate Christopher Bell race for a championship for the second consecutive year. Meanwhile, he has to watch his friend, you know, presumably they're still friends, Kyle Larson, contend for his second championship. And then he has to watch William Byron and Ryan Blaney race for their first, something that he's not, he can't be thrilled about. 18 years Denny Hamlin has tried to win a championship, and 18 years he has failed. There are freshmen in college that have never seen Denny Hamlin win a championship. Their entire life, Denny Hamlin has been trying to win a championship. Will Denny ever win a championship? I honestly don't think he does at this point. I think he's destined to be the Mark Martin, Vince Carter, or Philip Rivers of NASCAR. A guy that can get really close but can never just seal the deal. And there's nothing wrong with that inherently. He has over 50 career wins now, which is something to be incredibly proud about. He'll be in the NASCAR Hall of Fame for sure. But not having that championship is for sure always going to completely bother him. And then it's going to be a huge mark on his record. People are going to say, yeah, he was good. He never won a title, though. At the same time, he has to sit back and watch his rivals go out there and win titles. It can't be fun for him at this point. Kyle Busch has two championships in the same equipment as him. Martin Truex Jr. has championship in the TRD equipment. Chris Bell is now contending for championships. Matt Kenneth is contending for championships. And the whole time, Denny is contending, but he can't get it done. Jimmy Johnson absolutely ruined him mentally back when Denny was trying to beat him for a championship and nobody was beating Jimmy Johnson back then when he was on his run. And then since then, Denny's always just kind of been a guy that seems to choke when the pressure gets to be too much. And that's unfortunate for him, right? Because he talks a lot. He talks like a guy that has won multiple Cup Series championships and he's a guy that's got absolutely zero. He and Austin Dillon have the same amount of Cup championships and that's a ricochet shot at Austin Dillon and I don't even feel bad about it. But for Denny... It has to eat him up at night, knowing that he's once again not going to race for a title, and he'll be coming back for his 19th season next year in the hopes of maybe he can finally get one done. And I'll be honest, I don't think he does. I think his slow start that we saw at the beginning of this year is a glimpse at what's to come in the next couple of years, more so than what we saw at the second half of this year where he was winning races. And granted, he won Kansas back in May, but before that, his season started off really bad. And then it kind of flustered, fluttered around, fluttered, flustered, fluttered around. And then he got that win at Pocono and then he got that win at Bristol. And then since then, it's kind of just been all right. The 11 car has speed again. They do have speed, but they always have these self-inflicted mistakes that set them back. And I just don't think that Denny, Chris Gabehart and that entire team can overcome that next year and try to win a championship because it's not it just doesn't feel like it's going to happen. And then you move on to year 20. If Denny Hamlin wins a championship in year 20, that would be absolutely unheard of at this point. But it could happen. And then I don't think he really goes past year 21, maybe. So for Denny, it's do or die situation. And honestly, I don't think there's much doing happening when it comes to winning titles. So let me know in the comments, do you think Denny Hamlin will ever win a championship? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.